Hello Lava friends, today we're diving into level 12.21 and oh boy we have some exciting updates from some nifty ways to handle your factory relationships to powerful attribute management. Let's go! First up we've got the ability to disable factory parents globally. Let's talk about factories. So if I create a new factory for my post model, for example, let's call a create method here on this. And if I run this, you can see I get a new post model back. And yeah, with all some dummy data that I have defined in the factory. But you can also see we have here user ID of 10, which means also a user was created. And if we try to um, access the user, I will get the user because this is now also in the database. And this is working because inside the factory, under definition, I have some default values defined and for the user ID I have defined that I want to use a user factory. And Laravel behind the scenes then creates a new user for me, which is very helpful because in order to create this post, I need a user to make this work. So this is very helpful. But sometimes you don't want this to happen. And what you could already do in levels, you could call the without parents method. Let's see what this does and run this and this will fail now because we have a not null constraint for the user ID. And what Laravel with this method does in the back, it switches out the factory with just null so that the parent is not being created. So you may ask, how is this helpful? Because this will fail now. Yeah, there are a few scenarios and one of them is when you just make a new factory. So it's not stored in the database, you just have this model here and then you can see user ID is set to null. And there are many scenarios where this makes sense inside testing, it speeds up, so you don't create the records in the database and so on. So the only downside here with this is that if you need this multiple times, you have to call this method like every time, but not anymore because now we have a new method on a static method on the post factory, which is called don't expand relation, don't expand relationships by default. A long name, but it tells exactly what it does. So by default, it's going to create those relationships, but we don't want that. So this means if we run this, you can see it still works. We still get null here and the relationship is not being created, but this call is now something that you could, could put at the beginning of your test and then for all the calls inside the test, this will be valid, but you could also put this somewhere else because yeah, this is now defined globally, which is very helpful if you are a fan of the without parents method and want to define this globally on a specific factory like here. Thank you, Luke. Next is a super neat way to perform value checks between columns. Here in this application, we have events in the database and you can see we have 50 of them. And now we're looking for a specific one. So I want to make sure that I only get one where the city is Denver. All right, and let's say also it should be an event which is now. So where the start date is smaller or equal to now, which I've stored in the variable before. Um, let's also fix this and let's copy this. And we also need this now for the end date, which should be bigger or equal than now. All right, so give me all the events in Denver or the, when now is between start and end date. That's what I'm asking here. Okay, let's run this and we get one event back, which is Laracon Yes, which is currently happening in Denver, yeah, which I'm not at, but yeah, this will be amazing. There will be a live stream today as well. But yeah, this is not the topic. Um, this works, we are making this work. Let's check out what the SQL code looks like. If it events, we're using where classes here, which is pretty obvious. And um, there's not any issues with this, but yeah, actually what we're doing is we are comparing two columns with one value. And I think this could be a little bit clearer and you can do this now with a new method where we also actually use not where clauses, but also MySQL between feature. And we have already some functions which we can use in level for using between. So we have where between, where you can compare two values for one column in the database. And we also have a method called where columns between, 
where you can check one column between two other columns. They're all very handy, but that's not what we are looking for. But now we have a new method here, which is very useful to us, which is called where value between. And we are first providing our value. In our case, it's just now. And then we provide an array of columns. And in our case, that's the start date and the end date. The rest should be the same. Let's take a look. All right, you can already see we're using between here instead of another where clause. And we still get our Laracon US event back. And the cool thing, it does not only work with dates or timestamps, it does also work with different values. And I believe this is a very clean and readable way to compare two columns with one value, because before that you had to do this with raw SQL, which is not so good and not so secure. So this is a way, better way where value between for you now to use. Thank you, Italo. And finally, let's talk about container attributes. In PHP, we are used when we create a new instance that these are unique. So here I have a new counter, I increment it, and then I get the counter, which will give me back a count of one. Only the last line here in this editor is being triggered. So this means if I bring in here another counter, increment it and get the count again, of course, this is unique as well. And I will get back um, the count of one again and not two. But also in PHP and Laravel, we are used to work with singletons where we want to say, hey, for this request lifecycle, when someone asks for a specific class, make it a singleton, give me the same instance back. And there are two things that we need to do in order to make this work. So first, we are not just creating a new instance. We are telling the container to give us a new counter instance because now the container has a chance to yeah, give us a specific one back. So let's copy this, let's bring this in here. And so far, nothing has changed. We still get one back, which is the count of our second counter. Then inside a service provider, like here in my app service provider, I'm now saying that I want to bind a new singleton in this case, and I want to do this for the counter class. I'm sure you have done this or, um, before many times. And now this should be enough. So when I run this again, that I now get two back because we get the same instance back, which was already incremented. We increment it another time and the count is now two. And yeah, nothing new so far. This has been working level for a long time, but here it comes the new feature. So we're going back here to the service provider. We're getting rid of this here. We can now define this also on the class level. So inside the counter class, I'm defining here a new attribute, which is called singleton. And if I go back here, run the code again, you can see this is still working. But now we have defined inside the container class, uh, inside the counter class, that it should be treated as a single. By the way, this also works with um, scoped ones as well. And these are two new attributes for you to use. I'm a big fan of attributes in PHP. And yeah, you can use them now on a class level as well. Big thanks to Rios for bringing this to level. And yeah, a huge thank you to all the amazing contributors for continuously making level better. If you love this updates, please don't hesitate. Give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for all the level fun. See you next time. Bye.